It's Wednesday. That means it's time to go through what's haunting the shelves of comic book stores this week, April 27th, 2022. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals. Click subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications. Let's check out This Week in Comic Book Horror, April 27th, 2022. Touching Evil, number 21, is from Source Point Press. The story and art are by Dan Doherty. One thing I've learned in my somewhat long life is that you really shouldn't touch evil. The folks in this book never learned that lesson. This is the final issue of the Touching Evil series. I got into covering it late, so I know next to nothing about it other than, if you've been anticipating its exciting ending, here it is. Just don't touch it. For God's sakes, it's evil. Rise of Dracula, number five, is from Source Point Press. The story is by Rich Davis, with art by Pruis Calzada. I know very little about this series, too, other than I've really dug its unconventional covers, and it seems to be taking The Legend of Dracula into bold and interesting new directions. Anyone know about this book? Let me know what you think of it down in the comments. Shadow Force number 11 is from Vault Comics. The story is by Kevin Scott, with art by Corin Howell. I love it that this series focuses on a secret government team called MI666. This issue has the team go up against folk horrors and lose a member to the dark side. Sounds pretty cool. Zombie vs. Robots number 2 is from Image Comics. The story is by Chris Ryall, with art by Ashley Wood. Reprinting the epic series from Ryall and Wood, this issue features the ongoing battle between the undead and man-made monsters. Expect fantastic short stories and eye-blasting visuals in this horror sci-fi series. Tarot, Witch of the Black Rose, number 133, is from Broadsword Comics. The story and art are by Jim Ballant. One of the lead characters is suffering from a lethal illness and decides to have a meet with the devil at the crossroads to find the cure. Of course it comes with a price. All this and the usual ginormous ass, ass. and even more ginormous -er titties, titties, ass, and titties. in this unending comic from Uber Talent, Jim Ballant. Vermilion number zero is from Behemoth. The story and art are by Breo. This series seems to be retelling one of my favorite stories from mythology, the myth of Persephone. It promises to be quite graphic, violent, and intense, so you've been forewarned, and if that cover is any indication, be on the lookout for some ass and titties, too. Hotel number 5 is from AWA Upshot. The story is by John Lees, with art by Lee Luridge. The hotel, where all of the creepiness and kookiness from the previous issues, is in danger, which brings out all sorts of horrors from the series past to protect and destroy it. Look for high stakes and strong horror in this latest issue of Volume 2 of this series. Vampirella Dracula, Unholy, Number 5, is from Dynamite Entertainment. The story is by Christopher Priest, with art by Dani Hajiwajija. Hadiwijaja. Hadiwijaja. The battle between Vampirella and Dracula reaches a whole new intense level of horror as Vampirella's true love is in danger and Dracula strengthens his attack to destroy our lead's world. Even with the cheesiest of premises and cheesecakiest of covers, this title is worth reading with Christopher Priest behind the pen. So look past those ass, ass, titties, titties, ass, and titties. on the cover and enjoy the solid storytelling of this series. Hellcop number 6 is from Image Comics. The story is by Brian Haberlin, with art by Gerard Van Dyke. I don't know anything about this series, but that cover, with Hellcop taking on a giant armor-wearing yeti, is fucking awesome. Being a lover of all things squatchy, I'll definitely be on the lookout for this one. The British Paranormal Society, 
Time Out of Mind, number one, is from Dark Horse Comics. The story is from Mike Mignola and Chris Robertson, with art by Andrea Muti. From horror icon Mike Mignola comes a tale of an investigation agency made up of a pair of investigators on different missions. While both think they are on solo missions, they're intent to seek out the dark history of the town they're in and try to find a missing assistant seem to lead them down the same dark path. These Mignola and Robertson series always entertain, and with the fantastic Andrea Muti on the art, expect amazing things with this series. Draculina number three is from Dynamite Entertainment. The story is by Christopher Priest, with art by Michael Santa Maria. Draculina's father comes to retrieve his teenage daughter, Draculina, expecting something amazing from the demon witch for Father's Day. Turns out Draculina has something much more diabolical in mind other than a tie this year. All that in a cover featuring copious amounts of titties, ass and titties. Bloodstained Teeth, number one, is from Image Comics. The story is by Christian Ward, with art by Patrick Reynolds. I dig the premise of this comic as it focuses on an opportunistic vampire who is willing to sell his immortality for a price. Sounds like a deal that fits well in these trying times. The art looks really solid too, and the variant covers seems to cast the lead vamp as Lemmy from Motorhead, which is pretty fucking awesome. The Swamp Thing, number 12, is from DC Comics. The story is from Ram V, with art by Mike Perkins. Swamp Thing has an opportunity to return from deep into the green, but isn't sure if he really wants to come back. All this, and one of my favorite bad guys, Jason Woodrew, aka the Floronic Man, makes an appearance in Ram V's amazing ongoing take on this iconic horror series. Alien number 11 is from Marvel Comics. The story is by Philip Kennedy Johnson, with art by Salvador La Roca. This issue wraps up the most recent arc, which takes place on a farming and highly religious planet, which has opposing views as to what exactly the xenomorphs really are. Meanwhile, the leader of this commune finds herself on her last leg, succumbing to a disease while attempting to save her followers from the aliens. This is great stuff from Johnson and LaRocca, who deliver solid sci-fi every month of this series. Finally, we have Something is Killing the Children, number 22, from Boom Studios. The story is by James Tiny and the Fourth, with art by Werthel Deladera. Monster Hunter Erica is back on the trail of a serial killer who just might actually be a monster itself. This series continues to be one of the best horror comics on the shelves, and you should not miss it. Any of these new comics interest you? I'll definitely be checking out Something is Killing the Children, Alien, Hotel, Zombies vs. Aliens, and most likely take a chance on Bloodstained Teeth. How about you? Let me know which ones you're looking forward to reading down in the comments. Stuck inside